It is 6.45 p.m. and I'm going to call the meeting to order. We have a quorum present. Uh, public comments. Comments will be taken from the audience on non-agenda related topics for a length of time not to exceed three minutes per, per person. Comments on specific agenda items must be made when the item comes before the commission. To address the Planning and Zoning Commission, please complete Guess that part's not <laughs> relevant here. Uh, no action may be taken by the Planning and Zoning Commission during public comments. Um, public hearing, first item, conduct a public hearing upon a rezoning request for 20 acres, more or less, out of the James Vayner survey, number 40, and being located on 10507 US Highway 290 East Mayner, Texas, from single family S. F1 and light commercial C1 to medium commercial C2. All right. Um, get where I'm at here. So this is a, a public hearing for Riata Ford. Um, and they uh, have filed for, um, to do like a little expansion to their business. Um, but back when it was constructed, um, the zoning was off. Uh, I'm not sure. It, it was many years ago and they didn't verify the zoning when they approved the site development permit. Um, and so it's zoned C1 and single family. And now that they're filing for this expansion, um, they need to have consistent zoning. And that zoning is the C2 medium commercial. Um, and so the city, we're recommending that this gets approved when it gets to that item. Um, Right now, this is just the public hearing, and um, no one signed up to speak for this item. So, but if you have any questions, I can answer them. No. We can wait until we get to the actual thing to do that, too, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you have questions, then you can ask them under the uh, action item, too. Okay, and remind me, we, we don't vote. Do we vote to close public discussion when no one's here to talk? Um, yeah, so you, you just make a motion to, motion second to close the public hearing. Okay. So I can't, sorry, Isaac's here, right? I can't see him on my- Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, he's okay. here. Yeah. Maybe my Zoom will catch up. <laughs> so motion to close not mine, so. <laughs> if, if you I have second. questions, just let me know because I can't hear him right now. Sorry. Oh, Isaac motioned. He oh, okay, see? <laughs> <laughs> and I seconded, I seconded, Scott. Okay, one second, let me get my notes. All right, uh, so Chairperson Tryon? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Leonard? Yes. Um, Commissioner Rowe? Yes. Someone just tell me what he says. <laughs> Yes, yes. Said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, my Zoom will catch up, I promise, at some point. Uh, Commissioner Meyer? Yes. All right, thank you all. All right, item two, conduct a public hearing upon a rezoning request for 0.36 acres, more or less, lots 11 through 15, and east half of lot 16, block 29, town of Maynard, and being located at 109 North Lexington Street, Maynard, Texas from single family SF1 to downtown business DB. All right, so this is, um, if you know that uh, two-story building right at the corner there, um, where uh, I think it's like Lily May's restaurant and there's a dance studio in there now. Um, it's kind of a beige brick building. Um, this is the property just north of that. There's uh, old white, I think it was a barbershop a long time ago. Um, the property mostly is covered with trees right now and it's own single family and they are proposing to do uh, like a mixed use uh, building with retail on the first floor and uh, eight apartment units above that um, and so obviously they need to rezone it to downtown business district um, it's within the area that that is permiss permissible so everything south of Boyce is generally permissible for downtown business district um, and again, no one has signed up to speak for this one or submitted comments on it. So if you have questions, I can look, answer them. I move to close the public hearing 
on uh, consent uh, on number two. Okay. Second. So that I was Isaac. That. That's yeah. Okay. He showed up now finally. <laughs> <laughs> your your Zoom is. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let me run through it. Uh, Chairperson Tryon. Aye. Vice Chair Leonard. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rowe. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Meyer. Yes. Uh, thank you. Sorry, I have to scroll through it. Um, item three, conduct a public hearing upon a rezoning request for 0.91 acres, more or less, out of the James Maynard uh, survey number 40, abstract number uh, 546, and being located near US Highway 290 East and Greg Manor Road, Manor, Texas, from light commercial C1 to multifamily 25 MF2. All right. Um... And so there's a representative here if you have questions. So they're only here to answer if you have questions for them. Um, this one, um, the bulk of the property, about the 10 acres or so, is already zoned for multifamily. It's already got the MF2 zoning on it. Um, and if you're looking at the little map, you can see there's just a chunk that looks like it was missing from this tract, but um, they've, they've purchased this about one acre from um, the adjacent property owner to add to their acreage. Um, and so they're just looking for consistent zoning. And so like the whole 11 acres now or so uh, will be zoned for uh, multifamily. Um, yeah, so if you have questions for me or for the representative, we could bring them in, but um, basically that's it. So. Do we know what is being planned for that area? Um, they do have a, a an apartment complex uh, proposed right now. Um, they haven't submitted it. Uh, they're still in the process of platting, which they've kind of, with this additional land, they've paused submitting their platting because they'll have to update their plats, their concept plan that they have in right now to reflect the new acreage. Um, but they have on their side, they, they, they're working on preliminary drawings and everything. So um, just typical apartments. And this is a project, um, they're gonna extend Greg Maynard a little bit down to their, their site. Um, okay, that was then, my next question. <laughs> if you remember, yeah. So they're gonna extend Greg Maynard and then um, the community impact fee, uh, the, the, the SIP that we had done back in December, if you remember that, um, for that wastewater line on Parsons. Um, that was uh, in part because of this development, um, could be tying into the existing city lines that are there on um, Browning and Wheeler. And so that kind of, with the additional demand too of just houses coming in, um, you know, we needed to upgrade that line to make it, I think like a eight inch or 12 inch. Um, so this project, it's been around for a while. We've been working on various development agreements and stuff for it. Um, so, but now they're, they're looking to expand by about an acre and zone it to multifamily. Do you know if the, we would ever move Greg Maynard all the way down to Parsons? Yes, so um, it is uh, slated to do that. And you'll see later on the agenda, it comes up again, uh, I think Adam, and <clears throat> um, the developer, um, Dwyer, um, they have all the approvals to construct that road. They're just putting together the funding right now for that. Um, and so I think the for this apartment complex, they're going to be, or should be ahead of that project, though. So that's why they're uh, extending the road a little bit, building a portion of it, and uh, Dwyer will pick up the rest of it. Okay. Um, yeah, and then, and that that road project also includes a wastewater line that typically this this development would have connected into, but since that line's not there and this project is going to be ahead of that project, they're 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 probably tying into existing city lines in Wheeler and Browning, but um, they they may do something else, but uh, likely this project will be before the the road is fully built to Parsons, but that is an approved project. Cool. Do 
have any other questions? Does someone want to put it forward a motion? I move to um, accept uh, agenda item number three, or I'm sorry, to close the public hearing for agenda item number three. I'll second. All right. Uh, Chairperson Tryon? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Leonard? Yes. Commissioner Rowe? Yes. And Commissioner Meyer? Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, item four, conduct a public hearing upon a rezoning request for 50.32 acres more or less out of the Greenberry Gate survey and being located near North FM 973 and Johnson Road, Maine, Texas from Agricultural A to two family TF and medium commercial C2. All right, um, so I'll just give you a quick rundown and then um, Mark who's representing the, the applicant, he's gonna give a quick presentation, we'll bring him in. Um, but this 50 acres, it's uh, across from the senior high school on 973. Um, and the city we had, or the, the school district um, a couple years ago at this point, uh, had extended a wastewater line through this property, through an easement on this property over to Stonewater. So they, when they did their senior high school expansion. Um, and with that, you know, this property then had easy access to our wastewater. Um, and so this, this project's come along and like it, the request says they're looking to do two family which is a new residential category that we just established in March, um, which is like a, it's a duplex product um, that they'd be building. And then uh, six acres of medium commercial, um, cause we always ask properties that are on 973 or 290 that they reserve some amount of commercial space. Um, and additionally, the thoroughfare, uh, Johnson Road uh, on a thoroughfare plan is goes through this property. And so they are um, creating that right away. And it should line up with the entrance to the high school. So that'll kind of make a new T intersection for the new Johnson Road. And um, that'll be the main intersection where they're proposing their commercial. Um, but I guess we'll bring Mark in and he can talk more about the project or expand on what I've said, so. Mike, if you want to get him. Can everybody hear me? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, Hi, Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, this is Mark Baker, SEC Planning. He's, and, he hasn't uh, shown up at my Zoom, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's in. Okay. So I'm going to try to share my screen so you guys can see uh, see what I'm looking at. Can you see uh, my screen yet? No. Yeah. Not yet. Well, it's not giving me that option right now for some reason. Do you have to like make him a presenter, Scott? Sorry? Uh, no, all participants have the ability to share screen. Is it by chance the presentation we have in this packet already? Yes. Yeah, it's the same one. Okay. Let's see, did that work, guys? Okay, now I see. Yeah, there we go. Yes, sir. It popped yeah. up. Okay, sorry about that. Um, Scott did a good job just giving a rundown, and that's that's all I really want to do is give you guys an overview of this track, so you get your bearings on where it's located and 
how it kind of fits into your city comprehensive master plans. And so uh, my name's Mark Baker with SEC Planning. We do land planning and entitlements and landscape architecture work. And I believe on the call also is Jake Straub uh, with DR Horton and Seth Meerig of BGE, who's the engineer on the job. And so hopefully we'll be able to answer any questions uh, you might have after I go through these handful of slides. Uh, the, the property itself is right on 973. As you can see, it's kind of right directly across from the high school site. It's about 50 acres and has the current Johnson Road on the southern boundary of the property. And then like Scott mentioned, we referenced the city's uh, roadway map and you'll see the, the green line here that's called the primary collector uh, is what we are implementing or proposing to implement through this project. And so it'll be an alignment that runs along the, the northern, northern edge of the stonewater development. So it'll it'll kind of come right right through here. You can see my cursor. And it kind of lines up right across from where that drive comes out of the high school. And then from a land use standpoint, the comprehensive plan uh, for the city currently shows general retail with SF3 medium density residential behind the retail. It's kind of a stepping effect from 973. And so we're proposing it's very similar uh, where you have the higher intensity uses on 973, stepping to a more medium density, stepping to the lighter density behind. The current zoning on the property, as you know, is just agriculture right now. And our proposed zoning, this, this shows the roadway as it connects through the middle of the property. So you end up with our proposal for the new two family uh, district on each side of that collector and then the commercial flanking the intersections of each side of that new collector road. So there's about 44, a little over 44 acres of the two family and six acres of the commercial that we're proposing. And, and uh, we feel it's an appropriate use just given across the street, uh, the land use plan, you know, has heavy commercial, industrial, general retail, and obviously the high school. Uh, we feel that that this location is well suited for, for the application of this new two family zoning district the city's recently created. So that's kind of it in a nutshell, what we're asking for uh, at this point for your consideration. And so with that, I'll, I'll pass it back to you guys for any questions or clarifications you might have, and we'll do our best to, to answer those. Uh, well, I have one then. Um, what type of businesses would be allowed in a C2? Um, uh c2 it's basically um it's just retail it's a little larger format is the idea for it um but i'm it, just more thinking like in its proximity to the high school right yeah i mean it's something inconsistent with uh what what could go across from the high school i mean there's retail around the other schools too um yeah. You have a lot of uses that are conditional uses, but Sorry? it's kind of just general convenience retail. Um, you could have a daycare, I believe, as part of that. Um, you could have a government office personal services, restaurant, okay yeah no I was just wondering about quite a, it quite a broad range of uses school. but That's all. a lot of them have conditions on them so yeah 
think um, I'm still trying to look at as far as uh, Scott, if you can help me out. I know we were trying to uh, see about having a light on that street. Um, I know that there'll be a lot more traffic on it's a pretty high traffic <laughs> area, uh, especially in the morning when, when school is, is going on um, for that commute. Um, is there is there any a, a time or a time frame for that as far as what they're proposing? Um, so for Johnson, where they're um, proposing to be, um, there hasn't been discussion of a light. There is one for Greg, um, Greg Lane. And so that's not too far, which kind of creates spacing with it. Um, it. It may that with this development and the traffic coming off Johnson um, and the school that it, it warrants a light and the, the spacing, the distance would be through text up, but they would, I think it's 465 five feet, I'm not sure. Um, they, they, they do have some spacing requirement between lights, um, but it should be, they, they may be able to have a light there and Greg. Um, they should be fine because they were doing one at Greg and Tina Harrow and those are closer than Greg in this future Johnson Road alignment. So. Okay, I just wanna make sure. And part, part of what we'll need to do is a TIA as part of the development of this track. And, and so we'll plan on complying with the recommendations of that report and so that'll that'll probably have determinations that affect those decisions whether that's desail lanes or you know, traffic warrants for signals or any of those types of questions that you have those will be vetted uh, when the transportation and impact analysis is performed got uh, on the two family is that same as duplexes it is, yeah. I have a question. Um, why two family versus the single family? What if, maybe I missed that earlier. It's just uh, it's a little bit higher density per acre yield on a, a, a two family for, type product. And it's okay. it provides a diversity of product from the single family behind. So it's it becomes similar to like multifamily where it becomes kind of a transitional use. It's a little bit higher density from a higher intensity roadway and commercial uh, stepping down in density a little bit before you hit the single family detached. So it's, it becomes a, a transitional type land use. And the, and the DR Horton has that product in their portfolio um, to to meet that specific market. All right, thanks. Does anyone else have any questions? If not, we can, does someone wanna make a motion to close the discussion? Motion to close. A second. All right, uh, Chairperson Trio. Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Leonard. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rowe. Yes. And Commissioner Meyer. Yes. Cool. Thanks. Well, thanks for coming to talk to us, Mark. <laughs> All right. Yes. Thank nice you. to visit with you guys. I appreciate your time. Thank All you. Right, thank you. All right, so on to item five, which is the consent agenda, I believe. I'm scrolling, so I can't really see. Um, consideration, discussion, possible action to approve the Planning and Zoning Commission minutes of um, August 12th, 2020 regular session and August 26th, 2020 called special spe session. Does anyone I'm have any? Oh, sorry. No, go. You're fine. Uh, uh, I, I moved to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I'll second. All right. Uh, Chairperson Tryon? Aye. Vice Chair Leonard? Yes. Commissioner Rowe? Yes. 
Uh, Commissioner Meyer? Yes. All right, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm good. <laughs> All right, um, what is item number six, consideration discussion of possible action on a rezoning request for 20 acres, more or less out of the James Manor survey number 40 and being located at 10507 US Highway 290 East Manor, Texas from single family SF1 and light commercial C1 to medium commercial C2. All right, so as I mentioned under the public hearing, um, they're just looking to expand their business and we, we told them they need uh, conforming zoning um, among some other things. But uh, so this is just the action items. We're just looking for a motion and uh, we were recommending um, approval for this one. I have a question on this. Uh, do we have an idea as to what the expansion uh, looks like? Um, yes. So, um, so if you're looking at it from 290, you can see all of these like their service center and the their all the, the the repair shop area. There's a building behind that that kind of runs perpendicular to kind of that um, stuff, and they're they're expanding that. They're doubling the size of that. Um, so I think it's associated with their service base area. But um, yeah, the and then um, they're going to be or should be fixing up the parking because I know when you see it, um, there's a lot of cars <laughs> parked uh, in the driveways and areas. And so they'll be um, increasing the parking areas for, I think they're the cars they work on. Just from the aerial that I looked at, it looks like about half of the property is not developed currently. Is that Correct. about yeah, right? They're not going into that area either. So the, they, they're kind of working in their 10 acre area and then they have that back 10 acres which includes the detention um and so they i think they, they purposely are not expanding enough that they have to increase the amount of detention their detention pond was sized for these kind of future expansions um and so under their site plan that they're they've submitted um they don't have to resize or do anything with their detention it's already adequately sized is there any plans for buffering between them and the uh, residential zones areas next to them? Yes, yeah, we did um, bring up uh, our new standards for buffering uh, and require a 25 or 15 foot wide buffer yard. And it has planting requirements for how close your trees need to be and uh, fencing and all that. That's all I have. Does anyone else have questions on this? I just want to make a motion. Motion to approve the rezoning request. This is number item number two, right? Agenda item number two. So it's six. Six. Yeah, I think the public hearing yeah. is two. So. Oh, it says agenda item number two on page five. Hmm. I'm all the way down on page forty-three. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. That was the first. That was the public. Oh, comments I see. Okay. Somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Sorry. Yeah, the summary forms. Uh, we we have a new agenda software. We're still. Oh, okay. Getting used to it. So that's why it's like, three okay, items. it's twice. Okay. I was following a out. different. I know, I was, that's why it's taking a while for me to right. scroll things. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. A lot of pages. We're getting used. Pages. Yeah. But I'm happy to be at page 43 rather than page five. So that's my, my bad. I'll second. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Chairperson Tryon? Aye. Vice Chair Leonard? Yes. Commissioner Rowe? Yes. And Commissioner Meyer? Yes. All right. Thank you. All. Item number seven, consideration, discussion, and possible action on a rezoning request for 0.36 acres more or less, lots 11 through 15 and east half of 
lot 16, block 29, town of Maynard, and being located at 109 North Lexington Street, Maynard, Texas, from single family SF1 to downtown business DB. Yeah, and this is a um, three story mixed use building there. So we were is recommending there... approval for it. And it's eight stories, you said, or did three. I get that wrong? Three stories. Three? There eight apartments in it. So it's Oh, three, three retail spaces and then four apartments and four apartments. So. Oh, okay, that's very different <laughs> than what I was thinking. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, like what? <laughs> right, um, sorry. Is this because I know those uh, that that side of Lexington, some of the roads get really narrow and kind of rough. Yeah. Is and that's why we've had to like, you know, n we there have been some other times where people have come um, to speak against stuff being mm -hmm. being built there because of that. Is that a concern like for this probably? I mean, do they have a plan for parking? They do. Um, right now they have like four spots or something like um, parallel spots on Lexington, um, which needs state approval. They'll have to get some kind of state approval for that, I believe. Um, and then four or five spots parallel on Boyce. And so they'll be um, creating that extra width of pavement. So the, the road for Boyce now, it is um, probably like a 25 or 24 foot of pavement and they'll add on the sufficient space for parking on that. Um, and then the remainder of the parking is on site. So they'll have a driveway off Boyce that'll pull into a parking lot for 20 cars, I think it is. Oh, wow. I'm surprised you can fit 20 cars. Like Yeah, it's 10 and 10. <laughs> if I remember they're, they're planned correctly. Okay. What's the uh, impervious cover for this property? Um, so the way we measure impervious cover, um, it's, it's a little different. We only look at um, building coverage and downtown business district, I think you go up to like 90% coverage. It, it's meant, um, if you know like Ramos is and Maynard Grocery, um, it's kind of meant to mirror that type of development where, you know, the buildings are attached or built out to the, close to the street and taking up almost the full length of a, the lot. Um, and so this property isn't at that level, they're not at 90%, um, but we don't calculate the parking uh, sidewalks, anything like that, and an impervious cover. So. Do we have any plans for uh, Lexington as far as rebuilding it or, or some kind of, um, you know, treescape uh, three-way? So um, Lexington and Parsons in front of Manor Grocery and Ramos and all that, that's the state right away. And so we're limited as a city with what we can do. Like, um, you know, we can't put trees. It's, we can't really do a lot with the parking or, you know, decorative lighting um, until it becomes a city road. Um, and so we do have for these properties under our landscaping ordinance, um, streetscape landscaping. And so um, there's a I think it's 25 feet or 15 feet that goes around Lexington and Boyce that's on their property that their building has to be set back from that um, they'll plant trees in. And so in a way it'll be, it'll look like trees on the right away, but really those trees are on their property, um, which is good because th there are plans uh, that are in the works right now that um, the Lagos development is doing that'll improve the intersection of Lexington and Parsons um to include some turn lanes and so that'll widen it a bit and so um if they were to put trees in the right away those may get removed if if this project you know puts a turn lane closer to their property you bring uh, another question to mind then uh when 973 is built around uh Manor, will the parsons and lexington become city right away um, so it's also loop 212. Um, so if, if 
the state will also abandon Loop 212 as the mm -hmm. state right away. And then we could make it a city road. So uh, every uh, Lexington south of Parsons, like going towards Lagos, that would become a city road when 973 is rerouted. Uh, but with Loop 212 still there, um, it's still a state right away. So that also would in, have to become a city road too. So. Okay. I believe there's, I may be wrong, but I believe there are some parts of Austin that have state designations, but are still city right of way. So I don't know if that's a possibility in the future for just a designation, but without it actually being state right of way. There, there may be something that I'm, I'm not familiar with, if, you know, if once 973 gets rerouted, that's the higher traffic road. So the state may allow the city to do improvements if it remains loop 212. They may allow the city to start treating it as a city road with parking and landscaping and lighting, whereas now it's, it's more difficult as 973. Thank you. Does anyone else have questions on this one? I have any questions. All right, can we have a motion? I move to approve agenda item number seven. And I'll second it. All right, Chairperson uh, Tryon? Aye. Vice Chair Leonard? Yes. Commissioner Rowe? Yes. And Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Cool. Thank you. All right, item eight, consideration, discussion, and possible action upon a rezoning request for 0.91 acres, more or less, out of the James Maynard survey number 40, abstract number 546, and being located near US Highway 290 East and Greg Maynard Road, Mana, Texas, from light commercial C1 to multifamily 25 MF2. Yeah, so this was the one that the that project they're just adding on an acre to their existing multifamily. Um, and the city were, were uh, recommending approval. Yeah, personally, I just like to know that Greg Manor is being extended down there to help with traffic. That's definitely going to increase. So, yeah, yeah, their 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 main access off is off the the section of Greg Manor they'll be extending, and um, their connection to either Browning or Wheeler will just be a like a fire gate basically. So, uh, it's emergency access only. It shouldn't be anything that anyone's normally using. Um, and I will also add that the the one acre that they're proposing to add, I've seen in their kind of preliminary site plans. Um, this is a dog park and parking. They're not using it to build more apartments. It's more um, just space for them to have a dog park and a couple extra parking spaces. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone have questions on this one? All right, well, uh, if we can move for a motion then. Motion. Move. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll move to that we approve agenda item number eight. A second. All right. Uh, Chairperson Tryon? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Leonard? Yes. Commissioner Rowe? Yes. And Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Thanks. All right. Item nine. Consideration, discussion, and possible action on rezoning for 50.32 acres, more or less, out of the Greenbury Gates survey and being located at North FM 973 and Johnson Road, Maynard, Texas, from Agricultural A to Two Family TF and Medium Commercial C2. Yeah, so um, yeah, you all heard from Mark and their plans, and um, you know, the city, we're recommending approval for this one. Does anyone have any questions on, on this one? No, it sounds like the roads that the 973 expansion is going to help. 
you know, support this, right? The Johnson Road alignment yeah. that they're going to do? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be another main road because the existing Johnson Road, I mean, that's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, but like the widening of 973. I don't think that's going to reach out there for a while, though. Oh. Yeah, that'll be a ways that'd, out. Um, that'd be a, oh, that's too far out. Yeah. Yeah, but there are, TechSud is planning lights, like I said, at Greg Lane and Tina Harrow and um, Shadowland Trace and Suncrest. So they'll be, uh, and then potentially if it meets warrants, you know, this project as well, Johnson and the high school um, after they do their TIA, as Mark mentioned. Um, okay. And so there'll be, there'll be adequate spacing on 973. I know right now it's just, that without, they're not being any stoplights. Sometimes there aren't yeah. very in traffic. Um, and they, they've added those turn lanes. I don't know if you've been on it, but it those yeah. left turns, so it helps to kind of keep traffic going. So. Yeah, it's been better. Mm -hmm. Okay, I move to approve agenda item number nine. No, sorry, good. Oh, All right, uh, uh, Chairperson Tryon. Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Leonard? Yes. Commissioner Rowe? Yes. And Commissioner Meyer? Yes. All right. Thank you. All. Item 10, consideration, discussion, and possible action on a one-year extension request from the Las Entradas Greg Maynard Road final plat. All right. Uh, so as I mentioned before, Greg Maynard comes up again. Um, so this project, um, the developer has indicated that they're working a lot closer now to getting it constructed. Um, there was a previous one year extension, so, um, but that expires next week. And so they are asking to do another one so they don't have to go through the whole planning process again. Um, and they, they're, they're working with their Entrada Glen PID, which uh, in some ways funds this road too. And so they're, we're working through that with them right now. There's ongoing discussions. Um, and so we're recommending that you, this gets approved so that way um, they can start on their road as soon as they're ready in the near future versus um, having to refile all their subdivision plats and plans and kind of slow it down a little bit because um, we're anxious just as much as everyone else is for some roadway connections. Well, it seems that it's been going uh, fairly consistent without any long lapses. So uh, didn't sound like it's a big deal. No, and um, I know like uh, one thing with plats getting extended or potentially expiring is, you know, if our development standards change, you know, we may want it kind of to expire because then they have to come to the new standard. Um, but our standards haven't changed. So, you know, what they have on file now is, you know, they're still applicable. So it, it's, you know, what, whatever they build is still the city standard. And so we have no issue with how the plat has been approved in the past. And are there any, are there any other questions on this one? Uh, if not, can we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve uh, agenda item number 10. I'll second. All right. Uh, Chairperson Tryon? Aye. Vice Chair Leonard? Yes. Commissioner Rowe? Yes. And Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, item 11, consideration discussion and possible action on a preliminary plat for idea manor, one lot on 13.19 acres, more or less, and being located in North uh, FM 973 in Suncrest Road, Manor, Texas. Um, this plat, um, it just hasn't been approved by engineers. And so we just need to take an action on it basically within a set time. Um, and so we're just recommending to deny it 
um, just until the time that it gets approved by engineers. But right now, our engineers haven't commented on it yet, so we're just looking for a denial. Um, quick question I, before we like do that. Um, is this the same parent company for the idea that um, got, was in the news about like buying like extravagant spending and doing a lot of unethical things? Uh, I'm not familiar with those stories, but if it's the like, idea charter school, it is. it is. So, yeah. but um, I know this project, they've submitted their site plan and their building plans. And so they're working kind of everything all at once. They're platting and their development permits all together. Um, Just curious. Yeah. Um, I move to uh, deny agenda item number 11. Second. All right. Uh, Chairperson Tryon? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Leonard? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rowe? Yes. And uh, Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Great, and unless I'm wrong, I think that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. We did it, yeah. Yeah, so motion to adjourn, please. So. I'll second. Oh, sorry, who did the first one? <laughs> oh, me. Uh, I'll move to adjourn. Okay. A second. All right. We accomplished a lot today. All right, uh, let me run through it. Uh, Chairperson Tryon? Aye. Vice Chair Leonard? Yes. Commissioner Rowe? Yes. And Commissioner Meyer? Yes. All right, cool. Thank, Thank you, guys. My Have dog is like 